Hey everyone, Jerry here. I just wanted to share with you another project from my Burnout Art uh, series. And these are the sweaters, the felted wool sweaters that Brian and I got from the thrift store. And if you didn't see that video with us shopping at the thrift store, if you want to giggle, uh, I'll link it up in the corner. You can go and watch that. It was really fun. And I can't believe how many sweaters we got. So I've been felting and cutting and really having a good time. I'm back at the beach now, um, but I brought this with me because I wanted to share with you what I did and also let you know that I made kits uh, for this particular project. Now, this is not my original idea. I mentioned this, uh, this before in another video, I believe. This is um, Morna Kreitz. More, I think is her name. Or I'll put it in the description box below. I'm sorry I butchered your name. Um, Morna, I think it's Morna. <laughs> anyway, uh, she's made a bunch of these on the internet and I had them in my on my Pinterest board and I've always loved them and I thought, you know, I'm going to make one. So not a big deal. You can look at them. You can see exactly what is happening here. I'm not really sure what she did uh, to put them together. So I made this part up on my own. And um, anyway, uh, I wanted to I wanted to share this with you and I figured I'd show you exactly what I did so that you know if it's something that you want to try. So um, before I start that, uh, to explaining all that to you, the, this is all recycled wool. Everything here is recycled. So it's not perfect. Some of the sweaters had little, you know, damaged spots in them. And this background wool is not a sweater. It is just a regular piece of woven recycled wool from a coat or um, something else. So I've been collecting um, wool for many, many years and I have a ton of it. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to make a disclaimer. If you purchased a kit for me, it's not going to be perfect wool. Uh, what you will get in the kit is enough of these. These are two inch squares. So you get enough of these two inch squares. It's 25 of them because it's five by five. And these are two inches. The little square is an inch. So the measurement of this, what you're looking at right now is 10 by 10. You know, it's hard to tell when you're looking at something on a camera what size it is. So it's a 10 by 10. And then this piece of recycled wool, uh, let's call it coat wool, uh, it's woven, is bigger. It's 12 inches by 12 inches. I made it bigger because I wanted to allow room for a fold under if you, if you wanted to fold it under to finish it off. Um, and you can see the squares are not touching and it is meant to let the background wool show. Now, I'm in, I'm in New Jersey right now. When I go back to Pennsylvania, I'm going to make more kits. I only made a few of these um, because I ran out of time. I hurt my back. <laughs> and that's a whole nother story. I'll save that for a, a little vlog. Anyway, um, so I only made a few of these, but my plan is to make more with different color backs because if you saw my acid dyeing video i'll put that up there in the corner too i dyed a lot of wool about a month or so ago and so i thought you know why not i'll just make some kits for you guys i enjoy doing that so all right i think i covered all of it um yeah all right now in the kit you get the wool squares you get this back uh, background piece that's 12 by 12 and you get the buttons so you're all set what you don't get is the needles and the thread so let me push this out of the way now and here's the little squares that I've been making all right now um, I have been using buttonhole thread now I'm going to leave this here for inspiration so you can see it and as you glance at this, you can see the thread. Now, I wanted to purposely, I didn't try to blend the thread in with the um, sweater yarn. I wanted you to see the thread. And I decided to use this um, button carpet thread. Now, this is old thread. I don't recommend you using old thread unless 
you know it's strong. And so you just do the pull test. You know, you go like that. And if it, if it breaks on you right away, don't use it. But if it doesn't, you can use it. And I find that the old button and carpet thread, extra strong, is generally speaking really, really quite strong. So I don't have a problem with it. Uh, you don't have to use this button carpet thread. I used it because I had it in a basket right near where I was sitting. And as I told you a few minutes ago, I hurt my back. I couldn't get up. So <laughs> that's what I did. Um, you can use pearl cotton. You can use embroidery floss. You can even use yarn. You can use wool thread. Um, yarn would be super fun. I think that the stitching gives it character. So I wanted to see the thread. All right. You could use all the same color thread too if you wanted to. You can do whatever you want. Stitch it however you want. The thread's not included and neither is the needle. So I just wanted to um, go over... how to start putting it together. So I'm just gonna push these out of the way. Oh, and before I do, you notice, oh no, these are all on the diagonal. You see how they're on the diagonal? And see, this one is straight. So if you decide to make this, you might wanna consider, do you want your little one inch square straight or do you want it on the diagonal? Okay, you have to do that before you start stitching. So now I have the button carpet thread. I did put a knot on the end and I just laid that down. Yeah, that's the right side. I laid that down and then I aimed and then I just put the button on top. Now this button has, and I'm just going to aim for the hole and I'm usually pretty good. See, I'm getting really good at this. And you can, you know, do your stitching straight. You can do them on the crisscross. I like them on the crisscross. And so I put two threads going one direction, see? And then two threads going the other. And uh, quite honestly, I only picked up this thread because it was sitting right next to me. So sometimes I try to do a dark on the button. Sometimes I try to make it so you can see the thread. You can see what, what it looks like over here to my left. That's it. I do two strings one way to the other, turn it over. Um, just I kind of just dig my needle in. That's it. I do it twice and then I cut it off. That's it. Okay, now the next thing I do, actually, actually, I'm sorry, I don't cut it off. Yikes, <laughs> I don't cut it off. I cut it off if I wanna change my thread. So if I'm not gonna change my thread, then I'll leave it on. So let me see. So this one has a different color thread than here. So I would cut it off. And so does this one. If you're going to use the same thread, which I can actually use this thread because it'll show up on that uh, off-white, then I wouldn't have cut it off. You get the idea, right? I know, you do this all the time. So I'm just going to do something simple um, because of the time factor. Now, don't do real small stitches when you're stitching on wool because it will sink right down into the wool and you won't see it. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I like wonky, so I don't try to make this all perfect. I want it to be imperfect because I think it just gives it character. So I'm just gonna go around here with you. You're gonna hang with me for a few minutes. And I'm going to tell you, these work up really fast. So I've been doing them at night while I'm just, you know, hanging out watching TV or I've been listening to uh, books on Audible. So I've been um, doing that at night. 
And I don't know, I make a, about 10 of them at least. At night. So this is a fast, a very fast, very doable project. And I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you that it's fast so you want to do it. I'm just <laughs> telling you that it's not going to be like a commitment project it's going to be something that you can you can manage in probably a couple of nights or less than a week depending on how fast you sew or whatever and I think it's cute as anything and I landed on this size because I thought it was doable it's just a small wall hanging and very doable all right so you see I just put some stitches in there just for fun and now I'm going to for sure get rid of this thread so I just go in there twice and cut that off okay so now you have all your all your little pieces and you've decided if you're going to do them on a diagonal or you're going to do them um, straight and if you're going to mix them up then you need to know you need to have 13 of one and 12 of the other because there's 25 squares all together so now you're just going to lay them out, whatever's pleasing to you. And I really just did an assortment in the um, kit. So you can just look. There's some bright ones. There's some muted ones. Um, they're like all over the place. Uh, then you're just going to lay them out on your piece of backing. And at the moment, the only backing that's in the shop I believe is black and then I think there's like a blue gray and it's woven it the backing is not a sweater I think I said that already but I just wanted to reiterate that um, so now you're going to take all your squares and lay them down and you can probably see in the camera that I left little tiny spaces in between this piece is 12 by 12 and five of these across is 10 inches so you have I left enough room for a border now let's talk about the border for a second um, so now the end the edges uh, I a lot of them are ripped so you could just leave them like that and you could um, and I'll show you at the end of the video how you can put like a, a case a tube here so you can put a stick through it and you can hang it on the wall or you can just leave it on your table like that as a centerpiece you could do that too i'm going to hang this on the wall so now you can finish this edge if you don't like the raw edge and you want to finish it you could fold it under and you could do a running stitch all the way around or you could get some bias tape and you can just Put the bias tape over the edge. Do you know what I mean when I say bias tape? Let's just pretend this is a piece of bias tape. It's a sweater, actually. So you just go like that, and you go like that. And then you stitch it down. So you could do that, too. Uh, you could also extend this. So you can get another piece of cloth. It doesn't have to be wool. It could be cotton or whatever. Recycle something, linen. And it could be a piece of eco-printed linen would look beautiful and you could stitch it onto here and extend it. You know, you could pull it, you could put it in a picture frame. So you could do a lot of things. If you have any other ideas, please put them in the comments below for other people to see because I'm sure everybody's going to be wanting to do um, something fun, whoever wants to try this. All right, so now I pinned everything down. I would highly suggest you pin it down so that the next, when you're doing the next step, which is you're going to stitch these down to your backing exactly the same way you did this. So you can use, you can put seed stitches here. You can use a different thread. You can switch it up. If you've been using buttonhole thread and now you want to use yarn, you could certainly do that. Um, just have fun with it. And then you could just do a plain a running stitch around the edge. You could do more seed stitches, whatever you want to do. But I did pin them down so that when I was finished stitching them, they would at least be 
in the center of this black square. So now what I'm going to do is stitch these down. And then when I come back, they'll all be stitched down. And I'm trying to decide what to do around the edge. So after I get them all stitched, because they'll have so much more character when there's all these stitches on there, something else might call me. All right. So I started stitching this on my lap. So once I got stitching, I realized it would be easiest if I just put a plain running stitch around each square and then I could take the pins out and go back after that and put the fancy stitches in. And I just had this on my lap and I felt like because it had all the pins in, you can see a lot of the pins are missing. I came on, I came back on to show you that I got a, I have these Masonite boards and I just put the board on my lap so that I can leave this flat. And there's two ways that I'm stitching this. Now it's going to be a little weird because I'm sitting at the table, but you can put your hand under and just do this. Or you can just and of course I'm using a black one. We can hardly see the difference. Or you can just kind of hit the masonite board. You can feel it when the needle hits the masonite board and just do that. Now I'm trying to use a different color thread because I want the thread to show. So now, because it's on the board, I just turn the board. I don't have to keep picking this up. See, and I can feel it hitting the board. So I know I've grabbed at least a little bite of the wool backing. And I am purposely not trying to make my stitches even. I like them when they're not even. So now I got all the way around there. I'm not going to end this off. I'm just going to go to the back. And this color will look really nice on this next one right here next to it. So I'm jumping around a little bit. And I'm just going to continue. I'm noticing I can get a length of thread that I can do at least two of these. And you could easily do like a whip stitch with this too. But I think for me, I think the running stitch is going to look cuter. So when I get close to the corner, I want to make sure that I get that. So, yeah. Okay, just move the board. And you can put your hand under there if that's more comfortable. I like, I like having my hand under there. And this, the needle goes through wool like butter. It really does. Okay, so I'll just turn it again. So if you can find some kind of a board, I would say that would be the easiest way to do it. Unless you don't mind holding it on your lap. Okay, I'll be finished with this before I go to bed, for sure. So when you get to the end, I still have to go this way. When you get to the end or you run out of thread, just go to the back and end it off the way you do these little ones. Let's, let's go to the end together.
Okay, and then I'm going to flip it over and show you the back. You see, it's catching. I don't know if you can see that. Let's look in the camera together. Yeah, you can see that. You can see it's catching. Yeah, I love it. I just love it. Oh my gosh. And I love that they're not straight. <laughs> this one's really wonky. And I just love it. And that's why I think it's important to have a, a nice um, backing piece of cloth because you're going to expect to see it. So for me, I just wanted the black. I wanted it to just be old looking. I just love it. All right, I'm going to finish stitching around the outside edge and then you can always go back and put more stitches in here. If you want to, you could do some seed stitching or anything. You can get some yarn and add some colorful uh, yarn. I'm kind of keeping this a little bit on the quiet. Sorry, we're off shot here. I'm trying to keep this a little bit on the um, quiet, restful, peaceful side because it is... Um, Part of my burnout art series <laughs> and I want to be calm and zen so I'll be back and um, yeah then we'll finish off the edge all right I finished uh, doing my stitching around the smaller squares and you can see I'm not going to pick it up because I have these laying on there I used six strand embroidery floss for that and I just did random stitching and again I tried to keep the thread uh, lighter or darker so that it would show on the squares and once I stitched around the edge which I showed you in the last segment as I was stitching around there I was able to take the pins out so I was thinking you probably could put a little dot of glue under there too, instead of using pins, but I'm not really a big glue person, um, but I know Stephanie's art studio, she uses, I'll show you, she uses this glue and she says it, it never gives her a problem. She'll glue down uh, pieces of fabric and whatnot. And she says it never gives her a problem to stitch through. So. That's an option if you the pins make you crazy. They didn't bother me because I had this piece on a piece of wood and I was able to, a uh, piece of masonite, and I was able to shift it around as I was stitching. And I started with the center and worked my way out. And I didn't have a problem with it. But if the pins make you crazy, um, you can try to come up with an alternative solution. So we are ready to put the edges on and I'm going with Brian's idea and that is the seams from the sweaters and I'm going to put uh, some listings up for seams because I know a lot of you couldn't even find the sweaters so when I get back to Pennsylvania I'll do that but I do a different color on each side and you can... so I did want to show you how I was stitching that down so I stitched three sides down already and I'll show you just show you this one I did this and then when I got to the corner I tucked the burgundy one under there and then I just went to the back and just grabbed it a little bit and it's not going anywhere so these um, seams are couched down and I'm using six strands of embroidery thread and it's brown but it's different shades of brown so you can see it goes to darker so now I'm back in this corner and I'm and if you don't know how to do couching you can do it two ways so you can go down and come up on the same side and then jump across then you would go back on that side and then come back up on that side and go over or you can just go down and up on the underneath so you'll get two different looks on the underneath side and I'll show you so this one was when I went forward and then over so you get the tracks and this one I just wrapped around so that's what it looks like and I'm not worried about the back but I just wanted to show you that's how you do couching so now I'm right at the edge now I want to just fold this back 
And if your seam is bulky, you can trim it a little bit. This one's fine. I think I'm gonna do this side. And I'll just put it under there, right? And then that's gonna go over it. So I can feel that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to take another stitch. Now oh, you see I'm running out of thread and I'm gonna go right into the gray. I think I can do one more stitch with this little bit of thread. I'm gonna end that off and get another piece of thread. So what I'm gonna do is to kind of dig into, I'm kind of digging my needle into that through this black wool. You know, it's so hard to see with the black. And just do a couple of back stitches. See, I lost my thread, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna leave it. I'll go back and fix it when I'm done with the video. So now I have a fresh thread here. Has a knot on the end. So I'm coming up right in the corner. Okay, now I, I feel like I wanna catch that gray underneath a little bit more. So I'm just gonna go back here and, and do that before I go on. And if you can think of a better way, then go for it. So now I'm just going to couch this down. So I'm going to try to keep a little bit of a something here to show the black. And I don't mind. In fact, I like it when it's not straight. So I'm just gonna to go to the end and then I'll show you how I do the end. Same way that I did this corner. Before I do that, I am gonna cut this off. So I haven't, I didn't cut these off yet. And see this one, it's really short. I, I had to do that, I didn't cut that off. That was his, the length of the piece. After, so after I do this, let me just jump ahead for a second. After I do this, you can leave this. This is raw edge. It's ripped, but I'm going to fold it under. And just, um, I'm not going to do a running stitch that you can see, I don't think. All right, let's take one thing at a time. I'll be right back. So I went all the way around. I'm back at the end, so I'll just show you again what I'm doing I'm going to tuck this underneath this one and I don't have much thread here so so I'm going to now I'm gonna turn over to the back. So I went there. I need another stitch here, but first I'm going to turn over to the back and I'm going to dig down in there and try to grab this brown and this gray to hold them in the corner. Okay, and now I'll just do another stitch over here because it, it kind of looks like it needs it. Okay. And I think I'm going to 
do another stitch right here, right here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna flip it over and bury this. And cut that off. Oh, I really like the way that came out. All right, so um, I'm going to fold this under now. I'm gonna just fold it under and just do a little stitch. Let's see. I'm gonna get some black embroidery floss uh, and then I'm going to stitch along here. I'll be right back. Let me get the black and I'll show you what I'm going to so do. So I have a really long length. I think they call it the lazy man's <laughs> length um, and I'm just folding this over but I'm going to do it from the top because I want to see what it, I'm doing and since it's black I don't think you're going to really see it so I'm just going to come up from the back and I want a little bit of the black to show so I think I'm gonna do a running a running stitch. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. And it's a it's a biggish stitch, and I know you can't see the stitches because I'm purposely using black. And I'm just gonna go all the way around. You don't you don't need to watch me do this. So I'm coming to the corner and I'm just going to fold over the black edge and then just lock it down with a few stitches and you'll see that in a second. So I just did the running stitch all the way around and now I'm at the very end and I'm just on the back and uh, doing a few back stitches to end it off. I'm all folded under and I'm going to trim off these edges now so they don't go past the end. I think that's All right, so I trimmed off the edges of the strips and I like it, I like it a lot. Let me pull you out. All right, it's finished. I think it came out really cute and you can see it's not really square. It's not, it's a little wonky. I love it. I just love it. Okay, so now if you wanna hang it up, um, what I'm going to do is make a little case for the back. and you. All right, I'm going to make a little tube for the back to hang it so that it can be a wall hanging. And 
I'm going to use this piece of cloth so you can see what I'm doing. But because it's black, I would probably use a darker piece of cloth, but it really doesn't matter. All right, so my strip, I um, tore the strip, folded over the edges. So I, I have a big fold over here because I tore it too long. So you want it to be at least uh, half an inch, three quarters of an inch. An inch is fine too, shorter than your piece right sides together, stitch it, and now we're gonna turn it uh, right side out. I'll be back in a sec. So I've stitched this and then I turned it so it's right side out. Now I'm going to stitch it down up at the top to the wall hanging and I'm just gonna do a little uh, whip stitch along there and along here, okay? And then I am going to use a dowel. Now you can, you can use whatever you can fit in this sleeve. So a dowel is easily accessible. And I just put a hole in the end of it. There you go. I put a hole in the end of it and then I put a little nail in there. Okay, so let me show you. So just pretend this is stitched onto there. And you have to leave a little room on both edges. Okay, so I mark, I mark on my wall where I'm gonna put this. So I put a little hole in my wall and then say I'm all ready to go. Goes like that. And then I can just, and then I have another one on this side. This dowel is for another wall hanging. That's why it's so long. So then I have another hole on this side with another nail in there. And then I've already got the, um, cause I marked it out on my wall. I measured it out exactly this distance apart. So I have the holes in the wall. And then I just put this, pick this up and I just tap it into the hole and I'm good to go. And that's what I do. You can also, cause I saw, um, Catherine on um, K3N, she uses this little screw thing. So this has got like a screw end and there's a, a circle there. So you could also, let's remove that, put a little screw thing. I don't happen to have one, I'm at the beach. Put a little screw thing at the end and now the hole is over here, right? Can you picture the hole right there? And then just and then put your nails on the wall and then just, you know, you'll just find where that the nail is and just hook it on there. That looks much easier, but I don't have any of these round things. So just make sure that you're leaving enough room on each end for whatever you're, however you're gonna hang it up. Okay, so one nail would be on this side and the other nail would be on this side. And the nail is coming from the back, or I should say from the front to the back. So that when you pick it up and hammer it into the wall, okay, the nail goes into the wall. So I'm gonna stitch this onto here. I'm gonna use this brown, it looks fine. And you really, you can't see it. And then it's time to call it macaroni. Yeah, I'm gonna make another one. I really enjoyed making this and I hope you enjoyed it as well. And there's uh, lots of kits in the store. Brian and I just replenished them. And hopefully by the time you see this video, there's still some there. And when I go home uh, from the beach, I'm gonna make more kits. And I'm also going to make different types of kits because I'm working on um, other wool projects. So um, yeah, just remember to keep moving. Just play, no rules. And remember to find something to be grateful for today. And I am always grateful for you, for sure. And I have a lot of other things to be grateful for this week and uh, I'll see you again real soon. Bye for now.